Your last village was pillaged and burned. You barely escaped. After wandering for what felt like forever, you finally found the perfect spot for your new village. But this land has a secret. Underground is a system of caverns filled with mystery and treasure. Welcome to Above and Below. Above and Below is an exploration game for two to four players from Red Raven Games. Players will take on the role of adventurers trying to build their village above and explore below. Will you be able to build your village and discover all the wonders the cavern can offer? Or will you be too scared to go any further? Let's find out in Above and Below. Place the reputation board in the center of the table within reach of all players. Give each player a player board, seven coins, a starting house card, and one starting villager of each type. Place the villagers in the large grass area on the left side of the board. Place the six star house cards face up in a row near the board. Shuffle the nine key house cards and draw four placing them face up below the star houses. Place the remaining key houses in the box. Set the special villagers aside within reach. Shuffle the rest of the villager cards and put them in a face down pile. Draw five face up along the top of the reputation board. Place the round marker in the top chamber of the caves on the board. Place the coins, goods, cider, and potion tokens in a supply near the board and place one cider token in its designated area on the board. Shuffle the cave cards and place them in a face up pile near the board. Each player board has a colored banner in the top left corner. Place the matching colored cube on the reputation board on the tour space. Decide who will be the first player and give them the first player token. In a two player game, give the second player an extra coin. In a three player game, give the second and third players one extra coin. In a four player game, give the last player an extra coin. Shuffle the house cards and the outpost cards, place them in piles near the board, and reveal four face up near the piles. Place the encounter book and dice near the play area. Now you are ready to play. Above and below is played over seven rounds. Each round, players will assign their villagers to take actions. When the player chooses to take no more actions or can't take any actions, they will pass. Play continues clockwise around the table until all players have passed, ending the round. There are five actions that players can take using their villagers. Explore, Harvest, Build, Train, and Labor. The Explore action lets you take two or more villagers into the caverns to search for places for an outpost. Draw a cave card from the top of the cave card deck and place it to the left of your player board. Place two or more villagers onto the card, indicating that they are the ones exploring. Then, roll a die. The result is compared to the lower half of the cave card to determine which paragraph will be read from the encounter book. The player to the left will read the paragraph and the choices and the explore numbers. Do not read the words in parentheses out loud. A sample set of choices may be Run and hide, explore 3, or explore 4, or stand and fight, explore 7. After the description has been read, the player will announce which choice their villagers will make and then rolls a single die for each villager they took. At the top of the villager tiles, there are pictures of dice with lanterns below. The number that you roll in the die will correspond with the numbers giving you that number of lanterns to explore with. For example, on this tile, if I roll a 1, I would receive 1 lantern. But, if I roll a 3 or above, I would receive 2. Add up the total number of lanterns rolled. If it is greater to or equal to the explore numbers associated with their choice, they succeed. If they do not or they want a higher choice, they can choose to exert one or more of their villagers from the card to gain extra lanterns. To exert a villager, remove the villager from the cave card to the injured area on their player board. If they succeed, the player receives the reward listed moves their villagers to the exhausted area on their player board, and places the cave card underneath of their houses. If the player does not have enough lanterns, they fail and do not receive the cave card or any of the rewards. Move their villagers to the exhausted area and put the cave card at the bottom of the cave card deck. If there is a failure description, read it and apply the effects. When you harvest, slide one of your villagers from the ready area of your player board to the exhausted area. For each villager you exhaust, you may take a good from one of your houses or outposts. You place the good next to your coin and may either keep it for later, place it for sale on the top left corner of your player board, or may place it on the advancement track. 
When you build, slide one of your villagers who has a hammer symbol from the ready to the exhausted area. You will then choose any available house, star house, or outpost card, paying the amount shown on the card back to the supply. If you want to purchase an outpost card, you must have an open cave card from a previous explorer action. You would then place the outpost on top of the cave card. Houses, key houses, and star houses will all go next to your starting house, whereas the caves and outposts will be placed in a row under the house's row. If you choose to train a new villager, move a villager that has the quill symbol from the ready area to the exhausted area on your player board. In order to purchase one of the available villagers, you must pay the amount listed below the villager on the reputation board. The newly acquired villager will be placed in your exhausted section of your player board. Do not refill the villager pool on the reputation board. That will be done at the end of the round. The last of the five major actions is to labor. In order to do this, simply slide any villager from the ready area to the exhausted area of your player board. For each villager you exhaust, you gain one coin. Additionally, if you are the first player to labor each round, you gain the cider token from the reputation track. If there is no cider token on the board, you only gain coins. Beyond the main five actions, there are a few free actions you may perform as many times as you would like before you take your main normal actions. They are buying from another player, putting something up for sale, and refresh the building room. You may buy a good cider or potion that another player has put up for sale. You may bargain and make offers, but you may only pay in coin, and it must be a minimum of three coins. The seller does have the right to refuse the offer for any reason. If the seller agrees to sell, you pay them the agreed upon amount of coins and take the good. You also may put up for sale one good cider or potion by placing it in the top left hand corner of your player board. Other players may attempt to purchase it on their turn. On your turn, you may remove a good that is for sale or replace it with something else. Finally, you may pay one coin to replace all four of the options of the available houses or outposts. To do this, place the current houses or outposts on the bottom of the deck Then draw four cards and place them face up to replace the ones you just removed. You may only do this once per turn, and it is not possible to replace the key or star houses. Once all players have passed, the round ends. First, slide the round marker one chamber down on the string of seven caves on the reputation board. If the round marker cannot move, the game is over. Next, place a cider on the cider icon on the reputation board if it does not already have one. Slide the remaining villagers to the left so that they occupy the lowest values on the reputation board and replace any empty slots to the right of them. Now refresh the villagers on your player board. First, you will use any potions or ciders you wish. If you use a potion, you may move one villager from injured to exhausted. If you use a cider, you may move one villager from exhausted to ready. After you have done that, you may move a villager one level from either injured to exhausted or from exhausted to ready for each bed you have in your houses or outposts. Next, you will collect income. Every player starts by collecting four income each round, but as you place goods on your advancement track, you can increase it. During the game, you can lay goods on the advancement track of your player board. You can only have one type of good per circle and can only lay a single type of good once. If you want to lay down more than one of a single type, you must lay it on top of the previous placed good of that type. For example, if I wanted to lay this rope down, I have to lay it here on this rope that I have already played. Above each of the circles there are numbers. The right number represents how much income you will get at the end of the round and the left number represents how many points you will get at the end of the game per good on it. You cannot remove goods once they are placed there. After that, you will refresh any goods on a building or outpost that is owned by a player and it does not currently have a good on it. And finally, you will pass the first player card to the left. Now you are ready to start the next round. After seven rounds, the game ends, and players will gain points for the advancement track, buildings, reputation, and card bonuses. Gain points for each good on your advancement track. Each building is worth one victory point. This does not count empty cave cards. The player with the highest reputation will get five points, 
The next highest will get three, and the third highest will get two. If there is a tie, add the appropriate awards together and divide by two rounding down. You can gain and lose reputation throughout the game. Finally, you get points for card bonuses listed on the building cards. Whoever has the most points wins. If there is a tie, the player with the most coins is the winner. If there is still a tie, the player with the most villagers is the winner. And if there is still a tie, the player with the most buildings is the winner. And that's above and below.